Hey, how you doing? Welcome to another time here in the book club. Uh, we're going to be doing the appendix on that book. Uh, we finished the uh, book last week with chapter 15. Today we're going to do the appendix on the book. And uh, we'll summary next week and be on to our next featured book. Um, let me go ahead and bring up a slide here and we can run through this. Uh, Great, I'm sure you can see my slides right now. So we're back with a book. We're trying to close out on a book. Uh, T.D. Jake's book, Don't Drop a Mic. I hope you've enjoyed it, all of our communication. And we're gonna do a sample message today, do a summary next week. And uh, we should be going on to our next book after that, uh, which is, uh, that book here, Cleopatra's uh, Riches. Um, I'm gonna try and get a few copies in so that I can find it here locally. So I'm gonna have to buy it of Amazon and get it this way, probably buy three copies or so. Uh, I look forward to that study, not because it's talking about money and I love money. I love talking about money. So I look forward to doing that. Um, Let's go on here and just do today's study. Uh, it's analysis of vicious summer, uh, like I said, one of the summers. And uh, pretty much uh, Dr. Frank Thomas talks about seven concepts uh, in, in analyzing Bishop's uh, way of preaching. Yeah, the book in the analysis kind of has used the message to break down uh, bishops uh, way of preaching and brought on like seven uh, concepts out of there, you know, just to, in a way to analyze the preaching. One was the fact that he, the fact that he has a calling upon his life that gives him a divine authority to preach. So there is a power that comes from the fact that he has a calling and goes back in on the message, right? So, right. Yeah, so if, if, if someone has a, an, an auction of the Holy Spirit, you know, then it, there's a difference in, from someone that's just preaching out of his head, you know. So that, that on its own, when it comes to a sermon, uh, for us, you know, it, it's, it's the Holy Spirit that comes back. It's not just the words that we put together. It's not the wisdom of words, but it's, it's the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, we just... Uh, present ourselves as, a, as an offering, but it does the work of conversion of giving meaning to the people that are here. So you know, when it comes to someone, that is a very important, you know, and, and for me, I mean, that affects me. That's the way I said I had two or put two occasions where I stood and I couldn't preach. I could, I could, I could say something, it would come from my head, but I don't like preaching from my head. I like preaching from my heart. I like preaching what I believe the Holy Ghost wants me to say, you know? So there are two ways you can talk. I can, I can rattle from my head, you know? But when it comes to teaching, preaching, you know, I, I hold it in high regards. I don't just want to say what I think. I want to say what I believe the Holy Ghost will have me say, you know? So, so that's one area of its own when it comes to summon. You know, I'll, 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 we can take this also to other areas. It doesn't have to be sum up, you know. Uh, whenever I have something to say, you know, the important thing is that you do your research, you do your preparation. You've already done your plus minus, as it were. And that gives you the confidence, the base on which you speak, right? You know, we, like my pastor was sharing yesterday, that he believes that whatsoever he puts his hand to, that he is called to do that thing. He sees his calling as to whatever he is ordained to do, right? You know, so we can take the word call, extend it into every area of our life, right? You're called to be a wife, you're called to be a husband, you're called to be a mother, you're called to be a father. You know, whatever it is that you believe you're doing and you're doing, and Bible says whatsoever we do, we should do in the name of the Lord to the glory of God, you know? So we can believe God in whatever area, wherever we find ourselves, ourselves, and believe that God can ordain us or empower us to do that thing, you know. 
So it's, it's not just limited to a sermon or, or preaching, but we can extend it to whatsoever it is. Your job, you know, because for a Christian, there's, not, there's no difference between secular and, 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 um, and, consecrated, and consecrated or sacred, right? Everything for a Christian is sacred because we are representative, we are witness of the Lord wherever we find ourselves and you know, whatsoever we're doing. There's no Sunday that is different from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Every day is a Sunday for us, right? That's the way Christianity is different from religion, right? For religious folks, oh, I'm only on Sunday. I can do whatsoever I want to do after that. But that is not the case. That, that's not what we're called as children of God. We're called to be as children of God to to be children of God every second, every minute, every hour, every day, you know. So that's important for us. Then number two concept, you know, that um, Dr. Frank Thomas brought out was the fact that there's the, it, it balances between intellect, intellectualism and spiritual demonstration. That means there is the uh, wisdom part, understanding of what's been preached, but then it's not lost just in the words or in, in earthly wisdom. There's a, there's a way whereby that is combined to the reality in the word of God. You're able to give everyday example and, and be able to bring the Bible alive, even with everyday example, right? Because of the word of God is, is practical and relevant to our day to day, right? It's, it's, it's fine. The principles are the same, right? The cultural setting might be different, but the principle of the word is eternal, right? The culture might be different. They might not be fishing, they might not be farming, but the principle, you're able to then bring that principle to bear on the reality of everyday life, you know? Uh, and that goes also even in secular, same in secular, secular talks also. It's not just about reading a book, or making a preparation, you have to be able to bring whatever it is that you are, you are presenting to life, right? You, if, you, if you're just talking abstract terms, then you might be wasting the time of the people that you're talking to. If they cannot relate to what is it that you are talking about. Uh, number three talks about the structure of a sermon, right? Uh, just talking about that whatsoever it is that you, you, you want to talk about, there needs to be a flow from the beginning to the end. Right, you need to have like a like a, the backbone, the skeleton of your message, which has the flow. You are you are starting from somewhere, you're going to end somewhere, and there has to be a flow between the two. It must not be disjointed. The the people must be you must be able to carry the people along without losing them. So well, that's what he talks about. The third part that there is a structure of a sermon that carries people from the beginning to the end without losing them. And number four talks about the flesh on the bones, which is just pretty much having a skeleton now, you need to fill it up, right? You, you, it's like you have an idea of what you want to talk about. Now you have to put substance to that idea, right? So, so that's what number four represents. And number five, talking about the embodiment of the message. You're talking about the fact that um, you need to embody the message that you're preaching. Right, you, you cannot be, for instance, talking about something that is sad and then laughing. You cannot be talking about someone died and you're laughing. You know, the, your, your personnel, your courage must be in tune with the emotion of the message or what you're delivering or what you're saying, you know, because otherwise, because if the message does not touch you, it cannot touch the people that you're, you're delivering it to, right? And number six just talks about you as a person, right? You know, I get surprised you know, on Facebook and I see some people post some things that don't make sense to me. But then you find a lot of people are liking it. They are saying all the good things about it. Oh, it is this, it's the best thing since sliced bread. Oh, it is this, it is that, it is that. But you know, it's not necessarily the message of what the people posted that is making people, people uh, say, say like, love and all of that or say all the wonderful things. Is the person, their relationship with the person, not necessarily what the person is posting at that point in time. Did you understand that? 
Can you relate with that? And I'm asked a question. Hey, hello. Sorry, 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 I was on mute. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I said number six. Can you relate to number six? You know, I, I just give an yes. example, you know. I, I yes. see on Facebook, yeah, you know, so people people gravitate towards you, not necessarily because of what you're saying at that That's point right. in time, right? Or right. right. what they know about you as a person. About you. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, the history you had together, you know. Right. Yeah, it's, it's all. So it's not just that one message that makes people gravitate towards what you're saying, but the story, the, the, what, the, the relationship they have with you over time. You over know? time, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Then number seven just talks about the fact that his message that towards empowering people, that, that's all. So this is, this is the real flow of all, all that's going to come after. I'm just, just going to further expatiate it. You know, okay. it's the, he, uses, he uses the seven concepts to, to analyze the message. Let 